Welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. For today we had on the show Leanne. She's an incredible actress so I hope you like this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. For today we have the incredible, the awesome, the badass, the epic Leanne. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for having me Dan. I love it. I love it. Tell me how, how's your day treating you? How's, you? how's like the first week of the year so far? Oh my gosh. It's the first week of the year. It, it feels fresh. Like it mm. feels good. Um, there's so many exciting things coming up this year. So, uh, I just am kind of getting immersed right into it. So it just feels like another step, another day, but with, uh, yeah, with an excitement and mm. an optimism that like, you know, hungry, I'm hungry for it. I'm there hungry for another good year. <laughs> I love it. I love that spirit. That's epic. That's epic. So, uh, Right, so again, uh, welcome to the show. Now, for those who don't know who is the incredible, super talented, badass, <laughs> epic Leanne, please tell us who you are. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, my name's Leanne Johnson. I'm an actress. I'm a filmmaker. I am an athlete. I am all of the things when it comes to telling stories on screen. Um, I think it's really about utilizing whatever skill sets, whatever talents um, I have in order to contribute to a project, um, in order for that story to be shared. I would consider myself an indie film artist, uh, meaning that I really, really put story first. Mm. So I like good stories, interesting characters, and sometimes that means that the pro actually most times let's be realistic it means the project is going to be a low budget and um, but i feel like you know you only live one life and i don't want to look back on my life and be like oh i wish i made more money doing crappy projects mm. um i'd rather look back on my life and say wow i grew and was enriched as a person telling stories that mattered on screen um, yeah. and that having a legacy to show your friends and family um you know uh, storytelling is one of those immortal things that people pass it on generation after generation after generation. And, um, you know, we still have DVD players. <laughs> like, I'm like, what year did the DVD player come out? But we're still making DVDs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's like one of those things where, yeah, I feel like it's an immortal thing, storytelling on screen. So there you go. I love mm -hmm. it. So you're basically doing everything. Everything. Yeah. Um, I love it. I, I think that you know, obviously my artistic uh, love, I guess, would be acting because it's such a visceral, emotional, full body, full emotion, full spirit, everything goes into a character. And so that is the most rewarding for me as an artist. Mm. Um, but you're limited in sharing that art with people if your story never gets produced. So <laughs> um, that may mean your project is working on a lower budget. So, you know, you have to pitch in and help other, other places on the, on the film set and, and it, on the, on the, in the post-production um, and getting the film produced. So I really do feel like, uh, yeah, being a team player and helping out to do whatever is needed to get the project completed and shared. Yeah. Let me preach on that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> But tell me, like, where did this passion begin? Like, what triggered it? Mm. Let's go back in time here. Back in time. Time warp. Um, so, oh, it would have been, like, theater camp for mm. probably, like, a summer camp. Like, maybe, like, a week camp when I was a kid. Um, and I remember, like, my parents just dropped me off because I'm, you know, very high energy and, like, just we need Leanne to just go somewhere and get that out. Mm -hmm. And it was a theater camp, and you came up with the idea for the stage play and then you worked with the other kids and then you uh then you performed it at the end of the week and it was like a detective story and so I played the lead detective and we because I was totally obsessed with Encyclopedia Brown and like Nancy Drew and mm. and kind of figuring out those mysteries and and um and so that was the synopsis of the play and I got to play like the lead detective and um, it was a really cool, it, it was, it was neat to, and I, I say this on some interviews, it's like, it's very eye-opening and rewarding when you find out that you enjoy doing something that mm -hmm. other people find enjoyment watching you do. Totally. I, I mean, like, it's like, oh, people, they, they connected with it or they got emotional or it made them feel something or they laughed. Um, you know, Samuel L. Jackson says, you know, he gets, he gets all these lifetime achievement awards. And he says, I guess it's really nice to be recognized for doing something in an industry that made people feel good 
or uh, entertain them. And it's cool to be recognized like that. And I, I think that that's a, a wonderful thing about acting is realizing, oh, something I like to do is helping people. In absolutely. A way. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. Because also, I mean, besides giving them kind of distraction from their reality, what I find pretty interesting is the fact that you get the chance to make someone else feel something, you know, either laugh or cry or being angry or, you know, like things like that. And I find that super interesting, the fact that you can make somebody else feel by just looking at something and also to be kind of related of the characters and of the world that they are created for the audience. But at the mm -hmm. same time, I mean, like when you feel relatable to a character, it, it's super interesting because how can you feel relatable for someone that you don't know anything about? Mm -hmm. Like basically total, like to total different worlds here, but their story that they are that that they are showing you, you get clicked somehow, and suddenly you care about that. And it's interesting how how a person can move by a film, TV show, things like that. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. It feels like you really like character yeah. narrative stories where you get to kind of get immersed into a character. Is that like your particular type of film that you like to enjoy or you prefer watching I mean, narratives? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I would watch any type of film, you know, okay. like, yeah. like here and there. But yeah, like perhaps like those type of films in which when the film is done, I get to think about the film like, you know, like more kind of into this more deep analysis of the characters in the world. I, I like mm -hmm. those type of films. Mm -hmm. But of course, every yeah. now and then I will enjoy a film in which I can disconnect my brain and just enjoy the fireworks and the show and explosions and everything and be like, okay, right. I like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> Popcorn movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, those ones yeah. are my jam sometimes. Yes. Yeah. All Every every piece of art has a place. I feel right. that is really important to understand as an artist and as a storyteller. Not everybody is going to like your movie. Not everybody is going to like your character uh, or it's just not the right time for that particular story to really, you know, for audiences to latch on to. But it doesn't mean it's not significant. It just means it's different for different people mm -hmm. um, or for at a different time. And so I think it's really important that artists understand, you know, that to enjoy the process, but also to lower your expectations for the viewer and the audience and just mm -hmm. make it because you enjoy it and you want to share that story and then just let it go and let it fly and see, yeah, how people respond to it for whatever yeah. they need. Yeah. Totally, totally. Because you can tell sometimes that the character or the project was like they put a lot of work to it and they try mm -hmm. to force it to it. And you're like, mm, something mm -hmm. doesn't click here, you know, and yeah. when they just let it go. And it's interesting yeah. because uh, I mean, I I've said this also in some, in some of the episodes before that back when I started, I never watched like indie films at all. You know, like back like before right. doing this, I was just focused more into the blockbuster stuff here and there. But when I started this, I was like, OK, mm -hmm. I need to, you know. Um, get my feet wet here so I'll check it and it's pretty cool because there are a lot of projects that they're actually pretty good you know that yeah. yes perhaps yeah. they don't have like this huge production behind you know like this huge budget mm -hmm. but the story about it you know as you mentioned like the story about it is it, it is something about it that it's more kind of focused on the craft itself and I'm like right. okay of course that every now and then I will stood up with an indie film in which at the end I'm like what the hell did I watch <laughs> but, you know that's part of the writing right. well you know <laughs> It's a mystery, you know, it must totally. be so profound because I had no idea what, what was happening. Yeah. Oh, I love that explanation. No, that's totally, so good. Totally. Yeah. And um, now moving on here, like a little bit, tell me what were some of the challenges that you had when you were making those first steps in your acting career? Oh, challenges, I think is just uh, getting you getting onto a set and just start acting, mm. um, start exploring, um, finding your 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 I don't know how you would say like your place your your vibe your you know what how you can present the best self mm. within your characters because I think we bring I bring a lot of myself into my characters I mean I don't know I mean there's only one me so <laughs> if I'm going to be you know a character I think I bring that uh myself into that character um and allow myself to be changed mm. through that process um so I think one of the biggest challenges is learning to be okay with um, creating uh, for for you and for that story and not worrying about what people think. Mm -hmm. And I think that to become a different character where people are watching you and they don't they don't see you in it is almost like you're it's not as vulnerable. But mm -hmm. if you're willing to bring parts of yourself into a character, or parts of your own experience, or um, 
you know, to that character, you're going to have an, a unique character, um, but it's also very vulnerable because then you're opening yourself up to the audience being like, ah, we don't like that or we don't like that. And that's okay. Um, but I really want that realism and that uniqueness. Um, I want to bring myself into my characters. Um, and that requires a certain level of vulnerability and like, you know, not clinging so dearly to what other people are going to think of me on screen rather than, Hey, this is the truth. This is how I see the character. This is how (laughs) I would respond in a situation as this character. Um, and, uh, yeah, not being afraid to bring yourself into a role. You don't have to separate entirely and dissociate. And I think it's okay to bring yourself in and to be changed and to learn and to grow. Some might think that's dangerous, but it probably is maybe, but (laughs) I feel like um, as an artist, I want to, to learn and grow. And I think acting is one of those, the most powerful tools to developing empathy is stepping into somebody else's shoes and walking Mm. through their world and seeing it and experiencing it, um, and being changed in the process. There you go. I love it. And you know what, like one of the things that I love about interviewing, I mean, you actors is the fact that all of you guys have different definitions, you know, I find, I find that pretty interesting because there is no, actual manual of how to be an actor you know what i mean that the other day i was mm-hmm. talking about that 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 is super cool that if you want to become an actor i mean yes you can use some tools here and there but at the end you need yeah. to kind of create your own stuff you know like your own mm-hmm. thing in order to kind of uh like uh like to show that that this is you this is how you play you know what i mean and yeah. it it is awesome the fact that all of you guys have different like uh approach here and there and mm-hmm. yeah, pretty, it's pretty it's, it's pretty badass <laughs> cool i love it and so Anyway, so t- time went by. You, you were you were making it here and there, but do you remember the first time you were on set and 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 like the first time in which you were like, okay, this is this is happening now. Uh, uh, well, I remember the first time I was on set, but then I also remember a time I was on set where it it got real, like real, real. So I guess mm. which experience do you want to hear? Like the first time I was on set, where I was like, oh, this is really happening. Or the first experience I had where it was like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I, there may be two different things. Maybe like specify your question. Let's go for both. Uh, <laughs> of course. Why not? Okay. So the first time being on set uh, and realizing all these cameras are watching you mm. and there's the like the audio guy and, you know, um, the PAs and you're doing your performance and you're in this imaginary world and you're, you're, you need to be immersed in that, but there's this, you know, they're like chewing on a piece of gum or, you know, they're like got the camera right in your face. And it's just, that's a very uh, eye-opening, shocking experience. It's like, wow, I'm, I'm creating something pretend mm-hmm. um, that's going to look real to people. And um, so that was kind of a eye-opening experience the first time being on set and being like, oh, wow, we're really doing this. We're telling a story that's going to look real. That's really just pretend. Um, so that was an, a new experience. And then there was the experience of being on set for um, Idol Girl, which just came out this Christmas by Rad Entertainment, plug. Um, <laughs> and it was in which we had to have one of the most emotionally volatile scenes of the film in one take because it was the time of day and it was our last day and we needed to shoot it here and it was bright and early in the morning and it was cold and it was wet. And it was like, okay, the end, you got to hop over this ridge you gotta, and then just whatever you plan for your character, do that. Um, the direction was much better by Rebecca, but I'm just paraphrasing. Um, and then that's, we, that's all the time we have. But so when I, right before we did that take, I remember thinking, I'm so glad that I know who I am as this character. Mm. I'm so glad that I did the prep work because if I wasn't prepared, I think you would have just, I would have just sort of faked the whole thing or it would have been very fabricated. But I understood the pressure. I understood the constraints. And I just remember being like, I know who this person is. I know how this, how they're going to respond. And then we did the take. And if you watch the end of the movie, you'll see it was um, very heartbreaking. And I just, that was, that was a, that was a big eye-opening thing for me. This is really happening is it really has to happen. You have to have your prep done so that it happens for real for the camera. um, And you can't, fake good acting I don't think I think it has to come from preparation and a place of belief Mm, in your circumstances and so that's where it became very real to me that acting wasn't just 
a game, it was a responsibility. And I was very glad that I put in the prep work because you don't always get 10 takes. Yeah. Sometimes you just get one yeah. and that's going to go in the movie and mm -hmm. it could make or break the film. So that's, that's where the responsibility of the art really came into play. And wow. I was glad that I did that work for it. Yeah. Wow. And do you remember the first time you saw yourself on screen? Yeah. I was like, man, I look so good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, but the truth is I, I'm an athlete. And so I'm used to watching footage, um, you know, growing up and such. So I, I see acting the same way. Um, I watch my performances and I go, oh, I believe that. Oh, I didn't. Oh, this was really good. Oh, this mm. could have been improved. Um, and then I think you really have to let go of the vanity of it and look for the authenticity. Okay. And so I think I, I don't mind watching my performances. Um, and I think for some artists, uh, you know, I think, are more on the humble side. I tend to be more on the narcissistic side of like, yeah, that was a great shot. Like, you know, it was good. Um, but then I'm okay. also very critical at the same time. It's like, I don't really care about the vanity, but I care about the authenticity. Mm. So I mm. think it's like, oh, I looked great, but that was totally a sucky performance. Like, you know, and so it's like some things that the world thinks is great. When you understand the art form, you're like, yeah, everybody's going to think that looks awesome, but it was, it was not good acting it'll be acceptable but yeah i think you just look at it in a different way and i think um i'm able to do that because i'm okay with analyzing performance mm. and being critical of that so yeah i have no problem seeing myself on screen ask any director i love it wow <laughs> wow yeah that, that's amazing but but to me like what is your goal let's say that what is the ultimate goal you want to achieve when you're performing like what do you want the audience to um, to feel or to see when you, when they're watching mm. you on a scene? Yeah, I think it depends on the, well, one, it's like the genre, like, so if it's a comedy, you know, I, I would love for people to enjoy it and to laugh and to feel good. If it's a drama for them to connect and to feel with it on a deeper level, sometimes it's in the same film, drama and mm. comedy. I love that. Um, some of my favorite actresses do both very well. Um, but honestly, it's just authenticity. So, the truth of my character believing that what is happening in that moment is real and what they're doing is the most important thing in the world whether it's making toast it's like this toast is mm. the most important thing right now um and doing it with the believability that it could be the the most silliest thing it could be the most intense thing but the audience is like i totally believe her mm. um and i think that doing those roles within the context of representing um women Uh, in the way that I've lived life. So that's really the only experience other than, you know, mm. hanging out and talking to girlfriends around me. But I see it shifting and I, I see the media portray or it has portrayed women a certain way. And that hasn't always been my experience. So I tend to go against the grain sometimes with my choices or my wardrobe or my makeup. Um, and because I just think, well, that's not really what my experience was as a woman and bringing that into those roles mm -hmm. um, because every little bit that you do as an artist contributes towards something. So if you, if you have a goal of representing women in an authentic way um, or representing our circumstances or our worldview, um, then everything you do contributes towards that or fights against that. So I think it's important for me that I always bring that authenticity and that realness um, as a woman living in this world into those roles, whether it's sci-fi or action or drama or comedy. Um, I try to bring like that level of realism and try not to misrepresent, um, women, uh, in, in films that I do. Yeah. I love it. That's, that's badass. What can I say? <laughs> Thanks. Incredible. Yeah, it is. Women are badass. Like I do think that, but we're also, um, Uh, you know, tender and compassionate and kind. And I, you know, I think there's a, just like guys, guys are badasses too, but you know, I think guys are also nurturing and kind and gentle. And so I feel like we can show those dynamic ranges within our roles and within those situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. And tell me like, what has been like, has it ever happened to you that there was this character that you were in the process of making it, but there was something about it that just didn't match you know that it took you more than usual to prepare it oh took me longer than usual to prepare it mm -hmm. um probably there was a oh 
Yes, there is a, a, a short film called Better Living um, by Frank Britz that he's just submitted to festivals. Um, and we made it during lockdown. Okay. Um, and then there was a lot of the editing process was delayed and everything, but I just saw the first cut, like a couple months or the, the uh, film festival cut. And I remember preparing for that role because it's a military uh, veteran, an army veteran who is going through PTSD mm. at the same time during COVID lockdowns, at the same time that she's in a situation where she could lose her daughter um, because her relationship from being in the military is split. Anyway, things that you don't really find out at the beginning of the film that you that you uncover. And I've never been in the military. So I remember I did a lot of interviews with women who mm. served in the military because their experience is going to be different than men oh. who've served in the military. Um, and I did a lot of research on military PTSD and what that looks like, how that's coped with. And um, there was just a lot of things, uh, you know, I have a stable home life, this character didn't. So I talked with um, women who had experienced those types of situations in their lives. And I really sought to understand where this character was coming from and why she would make the decision that she makes at the final mm. end of the movie, which is you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't, nobody, I don't feel like anybody would guess what happens at the end of this movie. Honestly, it's so good. Um, but I would say that was very intensive. The director, Frank, was wonderful on set. He was very patient. Um, he created a very safe space to um, immerse myself into the character for particular scenes. Um, and, uh, but it was a very difficult role to prepare for because, um, I didn't have a shared experience totally. like she did. So yeah, I would say that one. Wow. And also, mm -hmm. I, and also I would say that during this whole process of character creation, I mean, besides mm -hmm. getting the chance to learn new things, it can sometimes take you to a kind of very vulnerable place, right? In order to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're going to portray individuals who have shared that experience, there, even if it's a small percentage of who will actually watch the film, mm. I believe that there is a responsibility as an actor um, that you seek to do your best yeah. to portray truth in that, even if it's like a fictional situation. Um, and that's something you can do that, re that shows respect to um, individuals who actually have that as a career, um, whether you're playing a police officer learn how to hold the gun properly I mean I'm just saying um guys too but like get a learn how to hold it with a proper grip because the cup and saucer it's not that's that's not how you <laughs> control a weapon but I mean show respect to people in the military or people or police officers or mm -hmm. mothers or like talk to a mom instead of just going and portraying one um people who believe different than you um whether if it's somebody of faith or somebody who has a different lifestyle choice than you, like talk to people, f f get real stories and let that influence your character development, not just what you see on television or in, in film, because often those can be just perpetuated stereotypes. Mm. Yeah. And how you manage to break character and, it, and return to be, to be the real you, you, let's say. <laughs> oh yeah, that is typically dependent on the role uh, because Ooh. if I relate to my character a lot, it's, easier for me to break character. So if the character is like me, then in, a, in more ways than they're different from me, I feel it's easier to come in and out. Um, if the character is very different from me, um, I go more method in terms of if my character has an accent, I might show up to set that morning and I'll be talking an accent the whole day. <laughs> Um, because I don't normally have an accent. So yeah. I don't want to, you know, if I decide to improvise dialogue in the middle of a take, I want it to sound like it's that character talking in her accent. So there's certain things that I do if the character is uh, less like me, then I tend to stay in character more. And I let the director and the crew know that too. Um, so I'm like, hey, it's not that I don't like you. It's just that it's harder for me to come in and out because it's very exhausting. Mm. Um, but if they're like me, I can slip in and out. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it I does. Guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. Now, yeah. what has been some of the worst auditions you ever had? <laughs> Um, yes, uh, some of the worst auditions. Okay, one recently I had um, where the computer audio wasn't working. Not that that didn't happen just before this, uh, you yeah. know, this interview at all. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not at all. Um, yeah, no, never. <clears throat> But so I had 
my desktop and it wasn't working. So I, I turned off and I had my laptop and it kept slipping on my desk. So I was holding it like this, like I was holding it with my hands and the character was very animated. And so while I was holding it, I couldn't use my hands. And so I was like, you know, trying to be animated, but like, I wanted to move my hands, but I couldn't, yeah. or she was, and the computer kept slipping down. And then they were split sharing the screen and they had sent like, they're like, we want to see how you do this in a cold read. So I was like reading the script on half of the screen and trying to hold it up. And, and the character, like I said, was very animated and I was very restricted. And I just totally felt like I blew it. Like I was like, oh my gosh, that was the worst, worst ever sending gifs to my friend about how I just failed that callback. Um, well, I talked to the casting director a couple of days later and she was like, you blew it out of the water. Um, she said, um, but we, yeah, we are just doing like a POC, which is a proof of concept. And so we want to keep you in mind for our big feature so we can afford you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And also other projects they had going on. So something that I thought was horrible, um, ended up, ended up yeah. working out because Definitely. I was just like, well, you just keep going, like, don't stop. Like just keep going and don't make excuses. Just do the best you can. And, um, and work with what you have. But yeah, that was, it was a terrifying, I, I thought it was went so badly, but apparently they loved the improvisation of it. having yeah. to work with all these things. So um, yeah, it worked out. It worked out. So it wasn't so go. bad. I've had other really bad ones, but um, that was the most recent. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll take that. it. I'll take it. All right. <laughs> and tell me like how you managed to quiet, like the second thought after the edition, you know, like, uh, like those thoughts after you did the edition, you're like, hmm. I should have done this instead of that. Why I said this, I could have, you know, like all of those thoughts, how you yes. managed to basically just put them away and continue moving forward with your day. Because otherwise, once you realize it's two hours already passed and you're still in yeah. the same thing over and over and over and over. Yes. Oh, that's the truth. Um, the negative self-talk or the if or I should have or could have. Totally. I think, you know, I think I process it in terms of like, I just get it out. Like I'm like, ah that went bad. And this was, this is what happened. And this is what happened. Um, but you know, I think taking acting classes and getting mentorship and coaching really helps because then you have other people's truths coming into your mind that combat your own negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. instead of, you know, it's wisdom truth, like Helen Mirren, for example, she says, once you let that arrow go, you don't control it anymore. You have to let it fly. Um, you know, or not every role is for you. And, um, sometimes somebody else is just, it's, it wasn't your time. It's their time. And I think when I step outside of myself and look at like, Hey, it just wasn't meant to be in the whole grand scheme of the universe. Mm -hmm. Um, then it's just like, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be, or that situation was so bizarre totally. that it's like, it clearly was not my time. Um, and I think that reinforcing there will always be another opportunity learn from it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um what skill set did i learn like for this i learned how to balance my laptop and you know sides and like a, a whole bunch of things and still manage to uh perform authentically and in character go. um all skill sets that even if you think you know you messed up it's uh it's one of those things like okay how can i do better next time or what other type of preparation do i need to do yeah yeah absolutely you know i ended yeah. up i ended up Yeah, I ended up having like this idea that if something that doesn't work out, I would just say it was it wasn't just meant to be, you know. I mean, mm. at least to me, it's more like okay, I can I can put that aside and move forward doing something else because otherwise, as you mentioned, if you if you continue, if you continue like thinking about it here and there, like what if, what if, you know, thing like that. Once you realize you're wasting a lot of time and it's time right. that you will never get it back. So I was so the other day I was thinking about it, like why not applying that kind of mentality that if something if if something does that I'm working on doesn't work out at the end. I'm like, okay, what's it meant to be and move forward. Right. You know? Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That's good advice and keeps you moving forward rather than yeah. looking back. Yeah. 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 Keeps you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It, it keeps you sane. So, mm -hmm. you know, now let's say that for your birthday, you get a time machine, but, here's a, but here's the catch. You can only travel back once and to meet the 13-year-old version of yourself. So what advice, or what would you say to that little you? Uh, don't study so hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, I mean, I was such a nerd. Um, I still am a nerd. Um, 
but I think I was so focused on Mm -hmm. what I wanted in the next phase of my life that I didn't, I don't think my eyes were so open to exploring opportunities and different things around me. Um, and I was a very, like I said, I was a very nerdy young person. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I would say like, I mean, just realize like you might go to a top college or you might have high career ambitions or whatever, but you know, it doesn't matter what education you got. You still ended up working as an actor. (laughs) So, I mean, like, you know, uh, I think I would have just said, just slow down. And instead of looking forward so much, which is what I think our school system does, I think our school system is, it trains our young people to be like, what are you going to be when you grow up? Um, Rather than being like, hey, how are you growing right now into the person that's the best you right now? Um, And what opportunities are you exploring that you enjoy and that you love? And who cares if you're not good at everything? Um, You don't have to be good at everything. That's why you have friends and Mm. colleagues and other people who are good at those things. Um, Find the thing that you really love and how can you make a career out of that and bring those other people with you and work as a team? I don't know. I think I would have been a lot less lonely if I would have taken my advice from now into (laughs) that and less nerdy. I I think I would have branched out more, um, maybe Mm. gotten to more trouble probably. Um, But yeah, yeah. (laughs) I would have learned more lessons, I suppose. Yeah, but you know, something something funny about it. I used to be like the worst at school. And every now and then I will say like, why didn't I study more? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Counterbalance. So, we would have been best friends. Balance. Totally. You know, totally. back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I, 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 I like sometimes think about it. Like the other day I was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, like uh, I was just talking with a friend of mine and I, and I was just like, um, we, we were like talking about like the whole school, right? And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Like w- what happened to like to our old classmates? And some of them have all, already got married, have like this company. Yeah. Uh, you know this huge this huge house bunch of cars and I'm like ah crap but at, <laughs> but you know at the end I'm like okay you know it's I mean back then I used to be like you know like like what the fuck but later yeah. on I'm like you know it all happens for a reason you know that mm-hmm. means that that was meant to be for them that's cool that wasn't meant right. to be for me I just need to find my own thing and here yeah. we are so yeah I love that and I also don't know if they're a happier than you are I think you know, you the go. key is like, you can have, you could take two people. And I know this because I mean, I, I went and I worked for Habitat for Humanity and I built houses in Dominican, pretty close to the border of Haiti. And uh, you can take two similar people and put them in two different situations and they may have the same level of joy. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just a matter of contentment and doing what you enjoy. Um, exactly. and not an accumulation of things. I think things can become bothersome. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which I think that is kind of the fault of the whole system behind it that they teach oh, you yeah. that in, oh, order yeah. to, in order to be successful, you need this huge mansion, you need right. a bunch of cars, a yacht, a yacht you know, your private mm-hmm. jet, things like that. And when you don't get them, then you're not successful, which I do think mm. that, that due to that, there's this huge generation that, they're doing something, but they feel frustrated because they think they're not they're not successful, you know, which right, right. I mean, once you start to grow up, you start to discover that successful is a definition different for everyone, you know, for yeah. for for them might be that. And that's I mean, that's that's um that's their opinion. But maybe for other people it would be like, you know, for me, successful would be just find a cool job, a job that I like, have, a yeah. you know, have like a have a um the possibility to sustain myself. And that's yeah. it. And I have discovered yeah. that too over this uh, over this podcast that with some of the actors that I've interviewed, they just like it. You know, they they feel mm-hmm. successful because they're doing something that makes them happy. And, right. and once you yeah. realize that, you're like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would I, I would agree that it's more important to stay healthy and to stay positive here. You know, mm-hmm. instead mm-hmm. of having this all of this material, which at the end, once you die, you're not gonna be able to take with to take Mm-mm. them with you you know i mean they're, they're, they're just gonna stay there and rot eventually so mm-hmm. it's good yeah. it's good you could write a book with that right there i will one day <laughs> you'll see yay you should there you go no <laughs> i'll buy it <laughs> yeah i love it i love it it'll I'll take sure... me two years to read it because i'm a slow reader but i will buy it <laughs> i will sign it even 
<laughs> Chew it. Yay. All right. Now, uh, moving on here. Next question. Here we go. So let's say that one day, Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, you name, you name it. Oh, yeah. They, ca they call you and they tell you that they got this idea, which goes that all of the characters you have played at the moment, they're going to gather to celebrate your birthday. But the name, but the film needs a name. So how would you call it? Ugh, chaos. <laughs> chaos and cake. <laughs> chaos and cake, okay. Or cake and chaos. And it because I do play a lot of different characters. Um, and they may have conflicting value systems. Yeah. Um and uh, I think it, yeah, it would be, but then maybe it would turn into a big slumber party. I feel like that would be the trajectory. Like it would okay. be cake. Okay. It would be cake. Like everybody would be like really, you know, this this mild tension as everybody comes into the birthday party. And mm -hmm. I as Leanne, I'm like, hey, uh, everybody, because I mean, I played villains with swords and I played badass. military people with laser guns. Um, That's more played, badass. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've played quirky, odd characters um, mm. whose parents grew up in a cult. Um, you know, so there's like insecurity and abandonment issues. So, you, and then I've also played, you know, uh, mothers. Um, uh, I, yeah, I, I just feel like there would be this tension and then they would all eat cake and then there would be this big fight and then there would be a reconciliation and then it would just turn into like this big slumber party and, um, uh, oh, they might have to save like the neighbor's kids out of a burning house to unify their differences or something interesting mm. like that. They have to come together to to save somebody else. And they realize, you know, it's just one big party and and then they all have a great time. Um, I feel like that that would be the 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 film. <laughs> I mean, and so it's very contained. Couple yeah. locations, economical to shoot, you there know. You go. There you go. I mean, I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying here, you know, Netflix will know, you know, at some point, HBO. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There you go. Cake and chaos. So <laughs> so we're talking that it's a comedy, dark comedy. but of Dark course, action, comedy, sci-fi. Drama, yeah. horror. Mm -hmm. Yes. Multiverse, wow. maybe. Multiverse all, element, all I feel like maybe. All of them at the once. Yeah, okay. Where yeah. do I yeah. sign? That's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. Now, what about if you had to choose to go out to go out party, but with one of your characters? Who would you take along with? Oh, it might be a toss up. Um, well, so Penny from Chasing Rabbits is probably one of the funnest characters I've played, but she's very flippant. And I feel like she might leave me with the bill um, if I went out with her. <laughs> I feel like she might okay. just leave. Like we'd be having a good time. And then I'd be like, where'd Penny go? And then she's just like, uh at home watching a movie and just left me with a bill so she's a little unpredictable i don't know um i would say uh elaine from idol girl she's a uh recovering alcoholic who's really smart um so it'd be a really good conversation and she's very sarcastic mm. so i think that hanging out at a bar and partying with somebody who wouldn't drink and is angry and just making fun of everybody around her would be a pretty fun anti-hero type person to hang out with. Um, my other characters I feel like might be plotting an assassination of some sort. So I think that okay. would just end up, yeah, I would just be like bailing them out of jail. Um, so, uh, or we would end up on some heist of some sort. So I would say probably the, the, the miserable, um, sarcastic friend that you know loves you and is going to mm. hang out with you and uh, but yeah they're just you're going to have a great time with all their quips would probably mm. be actually from this movie I was mentioning earlier um, yeah so off the top of my head the other ones I don't think she could get into the bar because she would have two swords and they would stop her at the door so I mean mm. yeah you're not going to be able to go anywhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no Absolutely yeah not. no <laughs> wow. okay yeah. now If you could describe your whole career, but on a drink, how would you call it? On a drink? Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, on, a, on any drink? You can either create one or use one that has already been made. I would say just, I would say like, just vodka on like <laughs> the rocks. I don't know. I, I feel like, and the reason being is 
when it comes down to it, are you in or are you out as an actor? Um, mm. I feel like it's straight, it's simple. You know, you're coming in, it's a high percentage of alcohol. Um, <laughs> and, but it's risky, it's, um, it's simple, um, and it's straightforward, um, and it's gonna have an effect. I would say that, and whether it depends, no matter what the role is, I think I approach it like, you know, there's a risk if you drink too much of it, but you also yeah. know that's what you're about. And anybody who's going to drink <laughs> just like, yeah, I don't know that brought, yeah, just, or shots of tequila. That too is just like, you know, it's just, I am who I, like I am it. and I'm going to bring that to the role and there's nothing, you know, to spruce it up. I'm going to bring my authentic raw self to whatever role. And um, if it's comedy, I'll change it a little bit. But in terms of the heart of what I do, I think I'm very, authentically straightforward that you're going to get, you're going to get something good. You're going to get it. Good yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that, that analogy. Are you in or out? Huh? Okay. Yeah. It's like, sense. you know, yeah. You just, if you're drinking those things, it's you're serious about <laughs> what's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah of course. You know, <clears throat> you're not, you know, sipping something just to, I don't know. No, you mean business. You mean oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah, I get it. So check this out. So basically, goes that you're gonna have a lot of fun. Yes. Yes. But later on, you're gonna have uh, the worst thing over ever, and you're gonna yeah. feel miserable, which can relate to the whole part in which when you were when you are just recently starting out, or when you or, or when you are making a lot of additions and no and no you know like yes. no callbacks. Yes. Yes. So I would assume that's, that's the part, good. right? That's the part yeah. in which you feel horrible, like ugh. Yeah. Why did and I also bring this? you go all in and then it's over at some time. Mm. And that character is that part of your life is now a memory or it's a visual remembrance, but you move on to the next. So there is a hangover period after you finish a film with every character. If you throw yourself into it, if you, because you care yeah. um, and Absolutely. you're immersed and involved. So yeah. Wow. We just got like really metaphorical and deep on totally. uh, drink, drink, drink mixology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is how, this is how we go. This is how yeah. we go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not encouraging all of, you know, everyone to drink, you know, but you know <laughs> yes. what I mean, right? Responsibly. You know what... And if you don't, that's fine. You can still enjoy this podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't drive. Don't drive if you're going to drink. Yes, exactly. I love it. I love it. Now, my final question here is, so as I was, you know, as I was checking all of the things that you have done, let me just say yeah. that it's incredible, you know, on your IND page. It's huge. I mean, the list is so big, but I love mm -hmm. it. <laughs> but tell me, like, how you like, how like how you stay motivated? You know, because we all have those days in which we want to quit. You know, and it's so interesting yeah. because sometimes nothing bad is happening. Everything is good, but suddenly we get into this idea that we are wasting of time, our time, that we haven't achieved something great. Let's say, like, how you manage to get out of those toxic thoughts. And to continue being on this road that you have built for so many years now? I think it has to come. I know because I, I do have those thoughts sometimes. You have to want it for m more than yourself. Hmm. Um, so there, as you grow and develop as an actor, acting is dangerous um, yeah. because you see the world differently the more you, the more roles you take on and the more uh, stories you seek to tell you, your understanding of the world changes. than if you just walk in your own shoes, your whole life as an actor, you step into other people's shoes all the time. And if you're immersing yourself, you have to seek understanding. At least that's my approach. And so injustice or um, pain um, becomes more evident to you. Um, and other people may be oblivious, uh, to that. And so you're, you have to cope with a lot of frustration. I think this is why acting a lot of actors turn to drugs, um, yeah. and alcohol, because you want to escape the pain that you are now exposed to just as an actor. And I think when you go to a different country and you do a missions trip or you, you serve, you see this, Um, you see the poverty and the injustice in other countries and it changes you acting. Um, if you're a serious actor, I believe you do the research and you seek to understand, you go to a cancer ward 
and you spend time on that cancer ward and see what those parents go through with their child. And when you step into that role, you've now exposed yourself to something that you might not go through, but that there is that pain that exists. And so um, I think that, what was the question? <laughs> oh my well, gosh. Just, well, just... <laughs> <laughs> like... Acting, acting is dangerous. Yeah, explain that. Hold on. I was the acting yeah. is dangerous. So the question was like, <laughs> like how you, like how you stay motivated. Right, right. So I think when you want to quit, when I want to quit, I'm like, I just, why do I try so hard? Um, why do no big productions or agents or talent managers, uh, why do they keep casting these actors mm. or this because they have a certain look or they're shorter than me because I'm five nine. So I'm just like, I'm tall in the female world. Like, but I mean, come on, like Sigourney Weaver, Uma Thurman, like, come on. Anyhow, but like, there's just certain boundaries that you have to fight for that you have to break. But there are frustrations. But at the end of the day, I say, that's why I'm a storyteller. That's why I'm an actor, because I have to seek to share truth. I have to seek to share the stories authentically that other actors may not want to dive into <clears throat> or they might, or that productions might be facing barriers against because yeah. people don't want that film to come out. Um, and I think that I'm an underdog. I think um, I'm a fighter and I'm very stubborn um, and I'm competitive, but I'm not necessarily competitive against other actors and actresses as so much as I'm competitive to go against the grain. I'm mm. competitive to um, say, you know, to tell something that is meaningful, whether it's one person who nobody knows about and their story is amazing to share that with the world, like sunshine girl, um, the, the feature that we're directing, I'm directing and filming in June is like, just because somebody isn't famous, it's not going to be a huge biopic of like their life, like Elvis or, you know, s somebody famous, it doesn't make their story less significant. Um, and it still has the potential to impact an entire generation. So you have to fight for that. And I'm a fighter. So I want to fight for other people, not just myself. And I think that that is what keeps me going is that it's not just about me. Um, I, I want to share those stories with the world and I, I want to see other people succeed. So, yeah. We're just going to drop this mic because this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I love it. I love it. And yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit speechless, but let me just, Okay, um, you know, like to me, to me, I mean, actors, and I have said this before, but to me, actors are kind of the superheroes of this thing that we call life. Mm. The reason is, <laughs> is because, <high> praise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because well, basically, you guys go go through hell, you know. But mm. what I find pretty inter what I find amazing is, like, no matter how difficult your personal, like, your personal life might be at that moment, when it's time to perform, mm -hmm. you put that aside and you give us your best performance to us, which I understand, of course, that, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's super professional, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's super hard, you know, whenever you're having, like, a very bad moment on your life and you need to show a totally different face, it's super hard, but the fact that you're doing it, it is really cool. And also, I mean, besides giving us a entertainment for us to enjoy you're also showing us that dreams can come true of course there's this huge mm. amount of work that yes you, that you need to put first to it you know in order to kind of yes. make it happen yes so i do think that at the end also like the audience itself should treat actors more as humans instead of this mighty <laughs> people that they are not allowed to make mistakes or to say something you know what i mean because mm. we're all humans at the end of the day and i do think that that uh that criticize someone for a bad performance or something about it i mean it's you will need to be i mean you you need to really think about it the other way around to be like i mean like they actually make i mean they actually make that happen you know they are presenting us this uh this uh this mm -hmm. feature this show this play whatever and i think that's pretty noble the fact that you get the chance to give us something to us to entertain ourselves or to learn something new or to feel or to mm -hmm. feel a, a, like a new emotion you know so I find that pretty cool about actors that uh so yeah well thank you that's actually very complimentary I, I think I may be harder on actors than you are <laughs> myself like Absolutely. uh yeah but that's that's so thoughtful of you to to see us in that way and to be compassionate and to recognize that you know there are a lot of challenges to that art itself yeah. and and 
as an actor, I also know, like, I really am okay with people having their opinions. And if they're paying yeah, a course. ticket, if they're paying a ticket or they're buying a DVD or something and, you know, the performance isn't there or whatever, I appreciate that level of compassion, but I'm not going to hold it against anybody for absolutely having an opinion or judging. I think everybody has that right. And, um, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, I never, I would never want anybody who thinks my performance suffered in something to feel like I would think ill of them as a person. It's just wasn't for them or maybe they're right. And that was not the best performance. And yeah. You know, like my, correct. yeah. Yeah. Like my, like yeah. my point here is when I, yeah. like when I started this platform and I started to interview more and more actors, um, I started to, you know, like to uh, learn all of the stories and some of them were like super dark in which I was like, Oh shit. But wow, like, yeah. but like mm -hmm. no matter what yeah. they managed to put that away to continue, you know, working on their, um, on their craft, yeah. on their passion, you know, which I, which I do think, yeah. That, uh, that for example whenever we see this new this actor on this huge blockbuster film i have i ended up i ended up uh discovering that what people would say is like where did that guy uh, came from you know like whoa yeah. came out of nowhere and once you check right. like okay let me just check a little bit and you, and you check the background of it and you're like no this i mean this guy has been working for almost 30 for... years now yeah <laughs> you exactly know? yeah so there's yeah, so... years yeah yeah so like my point here was that in order to i mean my point was to kind of um, uh, that, as you mentioned that, and I do think the same, that every story needs to be told, you know, regardless if yes. you're super big or not, I do think yes. that you get the chance to learn as well for someone who is yeah. just making it happen as for someone yeah. who is already on the, you know, on the peak league, let's say. Right. Right. I love that. Totally. Totally. And at the end, what can I say, Aline? I mean, I, I love your career. I love your career. Oh, thank you. It's <laughs> what you do. And and as I was saying, like the fact that you have keep that you have keep doing this for so many years now and you're making mm -hmm. it happen. I mean, besides being a total super badass that we all you are, <laughs> you are also showing us that hey, that it's possible. So mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. amazing. I love it. Thank you. Absolutely. I also want to thank uh those who watch this video. Thank you so much yes, for watching. Thank either, you. Either if you're listening on Spotify or, or Apple Podcast. Uh, make sure to go follow Leanne like right now. I mean, the, the episode is over. So what I'm going to do is that on the description below, you will see her link to her Instagram. Let's make her viral. Hashtag Team Leanne because she's incredible. She's badass. She's epic. And again, thank you so, so much for making this happen. Have an incredible rest of the week. Keep killing it. Keep inspiring. Keep creating because you're doing a fantastic job here. And I'll see you in the next one.